COPS Provide is, is a multi-stakeholder uh, project that is uh, conducted in a few EU countries where we uh, talk about mitigation measures um, to uh, reduce diffuse pollution in agriculture, especially for plant protection products, towards surface water. So TOPS Provalis is um, an ECPA project um, which is focusing, for example, on developing the right mitigation measures for diffuse sources. Diffuse pollution is pollution that origins not from point pollution sources, which are typically originating from farmyards, by misuse, by spillages, but diffuse pollution sources come from fields that are treated regularly and correctly with plant protection products, and then this Products can enter surface water via different pathways, which are runoff, for example, drainage, and spray drift, especially as well, and uh, leaching. The fuse source pollution is a part of the potential water pollution that we encounter in agricultural areas for plant protection products. The majority of pollution usually is from point pollution sources, depending on the catchments, 50 to 90 percent. But depending on the weather conditions and pedoclimatic uh, peculiarities of the area, the fuse pollution sources can be quite important as well. Thanks to TOPS, uh, we hope to be able uh, to make much, much more awareness about this topic. Uh, we have seen we have big difference between uh, countries. Uh, of course, it's obvious that we are very much involved in trying to preserve a good water quality all over Europe. And one of the concerns, of course, is uh, the, the use of all sorts of uh, products, and particularly in agriculture. And chemicals is a very important one. And particularly for the production of drinking water, it can be quite threatening. So any activity that can uh, try and bring down the pollution with those type of chemicals uh, into the water, of course, has our support. Well, when I look at the contacts that we've had over the years uh, with, uh, uh, with the agricultural sector and also with the, uh, with the chemical industry, I think for too long, uh, actually also from the water industry, it's almost been looked upon as our enemies. And I think it's a very good step from ECPA to start on the TOPS Pro Waters project that they show that they want to move ahead and that they want to take responsibility and it's another sign for us that actually we have to look at ourselves as water industry as well and say is this fruitful if we always just keep complaining about one another and maybe the time is right now uh, to, uh, to try and cooperate wherever we can. The setup of the project is international one. We want to first of all collect the best management practices to reduce spray drift and uh, runoff pollution. Uh, we want to collect these uh, practices from all the different EU countries that we have. We also have expert technical partners that help us to, uh, to aggregate these uh, best management practices and then we bring it on an EU level and get a final consent from all EU stakeholders that these are the effective mitigation measures. And this is then the basis for implementation in all of the EU countries and this will hopefully in the long run effectively reduce the food pollution from agriculture. What I think uh, makes it interesting is particularly also the exchange between all the different countries. Uh, it's obvious, of course, that circumstances all over Europe are different, that the experiences uh, are different, but actually sharing that may give us the best results. Yeah, the main stakeholders uh, that we have in this area are first the technical experts, that means research experts from state research universities, from uh, private uh, agricultural research uh, stations and so on. And the other big important group are farm advisors, which have the practical experience. And if we want to have uh, EU-wide accepted measures, we on the first time need to get the agreement from the technical scientific community, but at the same time we need to get the consent of the advisors who are responsible for the practical implementation of measures of farms. I think one of the key challenges will be how to uh, motivate the farmers really to take up some of these best management practices because it's going further than we've done in previous projects. Part of the landscape management may mean um, taking some land out of um, production uh, for agriculture. So therefore we've really got to try and look at the um, benefits for the farmer uh, in doing that. And there are many benefits. I would also say that um, we need to push very hard uh, to make sure there are good funding mechanisms in place. Um, I think that farmers do need to be compensated for, for some of these activities. People coming in farm say you have to do this, you have to do this. I think it's better to use, to use the carrot principle saying, listen, this can bring this and this and this advantage to yourself, to your farm, to your neighborhood. And growers, they are willing to, uh, to implement new things as long as you use positive uh, arguments why they should follow, uh, follow the lead.
we can play our part. Farmers very much want to play their part, but you know you can't go green by going in the red as a farmer. There is a difference of, of looking to the to the to the research uh, as such and the practical implementation. If there is a possibility to implement uh, as such immediately uh, uh, some some measurements uh, uh, put down by tops, we will do so. So this is why we're looking quite closely to what's going on. One of the um, objections we do come up uh, with farmers, and if you put yourself in the, in, the, in, in the shoes of a farmer or in the boots of a farmer, perhaps we should say, um, is that he's worried that um, he's going to lose some of his, his production and therefore some of his profit. Um, and therefore we, we really have to show him that it, it, it does not necessarily be the case. For example, um, if he has less of these technologies to use in the future, because they are uh, the registration requirements are, are getting tougher and if these products continue to, to be found even in, in very small quantities in the water maybe that will play an impact in the in the next review of the compound for registration and he might start to lose some of these options so that's important for him especially as there are less and less um, products available a uh, question of resistance management might come into play this is particularly the case for herbicides for example where the number of modes of action available are very limited already. I think what we need to convince the farmers is to have, first of all, what is the financial cost implication of, 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 of the proposals, and secondly, how can it be the easiest way implemented on the farm. A kind of ranking of all the propositions with the cost implications as such, but also, as I said before, the benefits which they can bring to the farm. It could be that the most expensive brings the most benefit to the farmer. So, as an investment, it will, it will be considered. The farmers can balance their application. They need to get their application right to get the efficacy of the products. That means they need to apply them at the right time the right amount and in the, in the right place. One of the product of this project is a uh, development uh, of diagnosis tool. This is, uh, the, it is meant to uh, raise the awareness of drift and mitigation measures in a very simple manner, uh, in, in a manner that could be used by the advisors to raise awareness and for educative purposes and hopefully uh, also used by the farmers themselves. The user can play with different uh, mitigation measures to know what is the, the risk of drift actually. So the interface is very simple, but what is in the background, there is uh, research data and there is uh, expert judgment. So it is kind of mixture in this tool whenever a decision making is considered uh, on scientific data and expert judgment when where the scientific data is not available. It is going to be available on the website and also on, we want to be very flexible so it should be also available on the laptop, probably also on the mobile phone and all those mobile medias so it could be used directly in the field. Hopefully it could also be used by the, on the terminal um, of the uh, uh, machine spray computer which the, the operator has in the cabin of his tractor. One important aspect is to make as much as possible awareness so, uh, and training. So awareness and training, awareness and training. But from my point of view, training is a key point. So as uh, we have experienced that the TOPS first and Probadis now gives a very good tools to improve the knowledge of the farmers, to become more and more professionals. First make awareness, then train and train and train, then develop new technologies to reduce again the drift. Taking the advantage of our collaboration with the local authorities, we will arrange different training courses, one or two days courses, mixing theory, uh, theory and practical courses, and we will try to explain what we propose, to, in this case, to reduce drift, and what are the benefits inside from the economical, from the technical, and from the social point of view. What are the problems in certain areas? What are the substances that are most used? And I think that's, that will be a very useful uh, discussion between the industry and, and the people in, uh, responsible for the water quality uh, to try and find the best solution. It has been quite a lengthy procedure to see how can we simplify this down to get the right messages out so that people who end up advising focus on the right things in their advice, seeing the priorities, seeing the big picture, 
and say it, but still coming out with some really concrete advice that farmers know what it is that they can do and to change things by building their awareness and what the options are for them. The success of this initiative, of course, you can also only measure in the long term by having really a reduction of the pollution in surface water from plant protection products. But in the short run, we measure it by having at the right time the best management practices established. We have them collated, we have them discussed in national stakeholder workshops, and also we disseminate materials via trainings and information flyers, for example. And these we can measure as key performance indicators. The key thing is how can we get the scale up because the obvious thing is we can have a nice demonstration project but we want to see looking at the next steps what are the scale up processes to make it easy to scale up literally to thousands and thousands of farmers and, and advisors as well so that they can actually effectively bring about a change. So that's why it's key for us to have developed all the right things first because then we, we let go of it and, and we, we see the thing go forwards. Mm -hmm.